A good workflow is one that is always improving. That's why every time I jump into Obsidian, I think, how can I make this work better without wasting any time? So with that, I'm gonna run you through the top three improvements I've done to my Obsidian workflow in the last 30 days. So when we last left off, I was gonna be diving more into long form content with Obsidian. And what do you know it, I had a little bit of inspiration on a letter I read. It was a physical letter that I wanted to turn into a piece of virtual long form content, a Twitter thread. Um, so what was the best way for me to import that into my Obsidian Vault? I found the best way was actually using Apple Notes to scan the document uh, and then select the text and paste it into the vault. So I'll show you how I did that. So as far as scanning a document with Apple Notes, uh, I'm gonna link to a tutorial from Apple themselves. It's gonna explain that a lot better than I can. Essentially, you just open up Apple Notes, tap the camera and click scan documents, and it does a very magical auto scan. Um, and then with AirDrop <clears throat> or with email, you send it over to yourself on your computer. And this is the end result. So I've got the PDFs in here with this nice built-in PDF viewer um, right within the Obsidian uh, core app. Um, but the really cool thing is once you scan it, you can actually go into that scan. And this is the cool part. You can select text within the scan, copy, and then paste that into your vault. And that, that's exactly what I did here. So I have the photos in case anything doesn't actually copy correctly, in case you have a little crease in the piece of paper. Uh, but down here, I've got the exact almost verbatim text of that document in my vault so I can query it uh, with an obsidian and it's not just a flat file picture. So I thought that was super cool and I used it to create uh, the thread. And here is the thread. So this is um, a thread based on this person's life in World War II. Um, for Twitter, for each post, uh, the maximum you can do is 280 characters. So I have a little character counter at the bottom here um, and I put in little line breaks um, based on where I want my my tweets or, I don't know, posts with the latest rebrand of Twitter, um, where I want them to begin and finish. Um, and also, I put inline images um, that I want to be added to my tweets. A little trick here is when you throw in an inline image, you drag and drop, um, you can actually scale the resolution. So this is how the image would look in Obsidian, um, you know, if I just dragged it and didn't change it but it's a giant image and I'm trying to write a Twitter thread. So you're trying to navigate your text in these giant images. So a trick is uniformly, I just uh, adjust things down to like 200, uh, a 200 ratio here for all my pictures. So still see what it is, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't distract me as I'm writing. Another cool thing I found is as I'm writing, using the text generator plugin that I've taught you about in previous videos, um, say I've written this tweet and I just wanna, you know, change it up again. Normally, uh, like say I want to edit it for readability, change the voice, I would copy and paste it either into something like Hemingway app, um, where I would ask it to reduce the reading level, or I paste it into, uh, you know, chat GPT and ask it to run things, but I can just do this natively in Obsidian. So I'm just going to say rewrite the above um, in a more formal tone. It's not time tone. So I could just grab all this, hit the command palette, hit text generator, and then generate the text. Um, so it's processing right now. Uh, it's basically going to the API and then it comes back with this. So obviously it's not formatted as like one line per, uh, like one sentence per line, like I like it, but I can change that. Um, looking at this here, um, obviously using a lot, you know, fancier words, the heartland, devastating, nervousness, exhaustion. So. I don't know, it gives me a lot of cool ideas. I don't need to go anywhere for this. This is querying the same uh, OpenAI interface and then I can use that if I'd like um, or, uh, or I can just type in a new query, all from Obsidian. I don't need to log into the web, go to the API, get distracted by Twitter on the way there. So I find that really nice. And finally, um, we've talked a little bit about read it later apps, my favorite omnivore and how it feeds into Obsidian. So I've really been enjoying uh, incorporating all of those highlights for my reading into my vaults, uh, but I'm trying to find a better way to kind of, you know, skim through them. Um, Cause how things are importing right now is I have a folder within it. I have a subfolder called omnivore, and then I have kind of dated folders based on when I access the notes. And within each folder you have uh, each, each of the readings that I have highlights from. So it's very clunky to look through it here. 
So the best thing I found, um, just to look at things uh, at a glance, is to go into your uh, graph view, put in a filter for hashtag omnivore, because based on the default import settings, um, everything that you import in from omnivore into Obsidian comes with a hashtag omnivore on it. So if I just look for hashtag omnivore, here are all of the files that, uh, that I have um, imported in. And then this is a much easier way for me to just look at the titles, you know, see which one I want to interact with today. Um, Cities and ambition, that looks cool. So I'll click that, jumps me into the highlight here. Um, if I want to go to the actual article here, I, I can pop it in right on the Obsidian uh, app, uh, the web app. And then I can just go back and go back to my, you know, highlights only graph view here and look for something else to have fun with. So these are the three ways I've improved my Obsidian workflow in the last month. If you like this video, consider subscribing for more content and I'll see you all next time. Peace.